I wanted to talk about eating during the thanks or during the holiday season. And I wanted to start by sharing an embarrassing story from my past. I ate too much. I know this is hard to believe, but I ate too much and I want to share how much I ate. And you might be thinking <laughs> to yourself, Adam, it's okay. We all eat too much during the holidays, but let me, let me just set the stage for you right here. My grandma spent the entire day cooking a feast. I'm talking beef, turkey, cream peas, rice pudding, rolls, gravy, mashed potatoes, the whole works. So when she said it was time to eat, I ramrodded my way to the front of the line to be the first one to put food on my plate. I scooped myself heaping piles of food. Gravy dripped off my plate as I ran back to the table. And as I set my plate down, I'm pretty sure I put a crater in the table because the plate was so heavy. I scarfed it down so fast that before everyone even had a chance to get their first helpings, I was already rushing my way back up to the line to get seconds. And did I ever pay for it? I felt so stuffed that a simple flick could have popped me like a balloon. I definitely did not feel very lissom that day because my brother and my dad had to roll me from the kitchen to the living room so that we could open presents on that Christmas. So there I lay on the floor like a beached whale just so we could open presents. All right, maybe it wasn't that bad, but I did eat a lot of food that day and I did feel really bad. Everybody was concerned that I was sick. Maybe I got like real fast food poisoning or something, but that wasn't the case. I just ate way too much. I probably ate a day's worth of food in about 10 minutes and that's not gonna sit well with anybody. This is something that you might've experienced yourself over the years during holiday eating or birthday eating or just any kind of get together because the holidays or any of those types of celebrations are typically centered around food. When are we going to eat the meal? We're going to have appetizers. There's going to be cake or pie. Whatever holiday gathering you're going to have coming up, even though it may look a little bit different for you this year because of COVID, I wanted to share some tips about eating because we feel like we eat a lot of food and we feel that we gain weight during the holidays. In fact, there's a perception that we gain approximately five pounds between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. You might be laughing at that number and saying, gee, Adam, that number's a little low, don't you think? Well, not really, that's actually the, the myth that is out there. But it's a myth, as you'll see by this chart right here. About 20 years ago, researchers published a study in the New England Journal of Medicine that found that most of us only gain about a pound between Thanksgiving and New Year's, believe it or not. But the catch is that we keep that pound on throughout the year so we don't work it off after the holidays are over. But even though we only gain a pound, there is a perception that we gain a lot more during the holidays. My name is Adam Bockler. I'm a certified personal trainer and a fitness nutrition specialist through the American Council on Exercise. And today I'd like to share how you can avoid overeating during the holidays so that you don't feel like you've gained a bunch of weight by the time New Year's Day rolls around. If you take away nothing else from my presentation today, I want you to remember this. You are in control of what you eat and when you eat it, nobody else. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I'll talk about what you can do before, during, and after the meal so that you don't walk away from your next party feeling bloated and ready to pop like a balloon. So let's start talking, let's start by talking about what you can do before your meal. First of all, eat normally the day of your party. This might sound counterintuitive. You might think to yourself, oh, I'm going to not eat so much so that I can just completely overindulge and eat a ton of food at the party. Do not fall for this trap. Here's why. We have several hormones that regulate hunger and appetite and those feelings and how they connect from our body to our brain. Ghrelin is one of those hormones. Ghrelin is known as the hunger hormone, and it's released by the stomach when your stomach is empty. 
and it communicates with the brain to trigger feelings of hunger. Eating a meal causes our ghrelin to decrease. Following a meal, our pancreas secretes insulin. And one of insulin's functions is to suppress your appetite. It also converts blood sugar into energy. We get blood sugar by eating food. Without food, our body has low blood sugar. That low blood sugar leads to feelings of fatigue, irritability, and confusion, also known as being hangry. <laughs> More on this in a little bit. Our bodies have mechanisms to help us maintain a healthy weight, and that's where the hormone leptin comes in. Leptin is responsible for the feeling of feeling full, also known as satiety, S-A-T-I-E-T-Y. When we ignore those signals from leptin that tell us that we're full and we keep eating, of course, we're bound to gain weight. The reason that I bring this up and that I lay the science on pretty heavily in the beginning is it informs a lot of what's to come in this presentation. These are the foundation of hunger and appetite, and ultimately weight gain. So it's important that we have a little bit of an understanding and a level set about how they work and the signals they send to the brain. All of this is to say though, that you should eat normally, relatively normally, the day of your next holiday meal so that you don't arrive feeling famished and overindulged. The second thing you can do is drink lots of water. Water is a cheap, natural, zero calorie appetite suppressant. In a 2014 study, young overweight female participants drank 500 milliliters of water before breakfast, lunch, and dinner. This extra water intake was above and beyond what they were already drinking to begin with. Among other benefits found from that study, the researchers found that the women had less of an appetite as a result of drinking that extra water. A 2018 study found similar results. Specifically, it says, and I quote, pre-meal water consumption led to a significant reduction in meal energy intake. In other words, the research participants ate less as a result of drinking more water. However, plain old water can be boring. So one of my favorite hacks is to drink sparkling water. I get sparkling water at Costco, but you can get it almost anywhere. Sparkling water is like extra water, but it provides a little extra oomph because it's carbonated and depending on the kind you get can even be flavored. The facility Houston Methodist suggests that sparkling water is just as healthy as regular water. It can help you feel fuller for longer periods of time after meals. It can improve your heart health and only has a slightly more chance of damaging your tooth enamel than regular water does. You could also consider adding whey protein powder to your water to flavor it a little bit. There are a bunch of studies that point to the benefits of drinking whey protein powder before your next meal, but I thought this one was particularly appropriate. In 2010, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study showing that participants were given varying amounts of whey protein before eating pizza. Those who consumed no whey protein over on the left here ate way more pizza than those who consumed the 40 grams of whey protein. So as you consume more whey and water, you drank or you ate less pizza along the way. So whether you drink plain old water or you kick it up a notch with whey protein or sparkling water, the bottom line is this, drinking water helps decrease your appetite and makes you feel fuller for longer so that you're less likely to gorge at your next holiday meal. Finally, before your meal, think of your food like a budget. Chances are you probably have a financial budget for the holidays of what you want to spend on family, friends, and maybe even charitable organizations. Apply that same mindset to food. In my case, I could say I usually eat three scoops of mashed potatoes and gravy, but this year I'm only going to eat one scoop of mashed potatoes and gravy. Or maybe we usually bake two pies for New Year's Eve, but maybe this year we're only gonna bake one pie. Regardless of what that budget is for you, be sure to budget your food so that you can keep yourself focused on your goals. 
all of this that I've talked about is designed to help you uh, before your holiday meal even starts, eating normally, drinking lots of water, and setting that food budget are all crucial before your meal even begins. Now that you set yourself up for success before your party, let's think about that time from when the party starts to when the meal is actually served. The first thing you can do is to position yourself away from the food. We might like to think that we have strong willpower, but we do not. That's another myth we can dispel here. Our willpower only lasts for so long and it's connected to the hormones that we talked about earlier. Stay with me here. So remember that when we skip a meal, our bodies don't have much blood sugar to work with. And that lack of blood sugar leads to the ghrelin hormone to tell our body that we feel hangry. This hormone sets us up to overindulge. Our appetite is raving because we don't have any insulin in our system to tell our bodies that we feel full. When we position ourselves close to the food, we have to have self-control to tell us not to snack. And it turns out that acts of self-control also deplete blood sugar. Researchers at Florida State University suggest that blood, glu blood glucose, aka sugar, is an important regulator of self-control. Not only do we have a lack of blood sugar when we skip meals, but every time we have an act of self-control, like not to grab one of these little snacks, we lose even more blood sugar. This is just a vicious cycle. Every time we see that plate of sweet and sour meatballs across the room with the little toothpicks in it or the little hot dogs, our glucose takes a hit and another and another. Your body loses self-control every time you look at that food and it's going to want to eat it. As we mentioned earlier, eating increases your blood sugar levels, but that leptin that we talked about takes your brain about 15 minutes to register. And I don't know about you, but I can put away a lot of food in 15 minutes. That's why I say position yourself away from the food. Good rule of thumb here is out of sight, out of mind. Find a basement or go outside maybe if you can, but keep yourself out of that room with all of the food in it if you can, because you'll be less likely to snack on it until the main course is served. When the meal is served, maybe you or your host has provided options for plate sizes. Maybe you have a, a salad plate or a bowl, maybe you have a larger dinner plate perhaps. If you have a choice, pick the smaller plate. We tend to wanna to fill up our plate. Maybe it's because we want to please the host of our holiday party, or maybe it's just because we wanna fill up on a free meal. If you only have the choice of one plate, remember that it's okay to leave some empty space on the plate. You don't have to fill up the plate. You're in control. Now that we've avoided the food, the food has been served, so we've put some food on our plate. Let's talk about what to put on that plate. The key here is to choose real whole food. Real food takes up space in your belly so that it increases your feelings of feeling full. I'm talking fruit, vegetables, lean meat like chicken breast or turkey breast. But the key here is that real food only works if it hasn't been smothered in gravy or butter or any other kind of sauce. Another way to avoid unwanted bloat and food guilt is to pay attention to what you're drinking. Consider limiting your alcohol intake to only a couple adult beverages because mixed drinks can add up calories real quick with all the sugar that's in there. And limit your other calorie rich beverages like soda or eggnog. Eggnog packs a huge calorie punch. So I'm not saying not to drink these things. I'm just saying if you're considering uh, your food budget, maybe budget more for real food instead of liquid intake. Now that you have your food, let's talk about how to eat your food. I know this might sound rudimentary, Adam, I know how to eat food. But the key here is to eat slow. One bite at a time. Put your utensils down between each bite and savor each morsel. So remember I mentioned that it takes your body about 10 to 15 minutes for your brain to catch up. 
let that leptin hormone release and tell your brain that you're full. So while you're eating, you can say things like, I didn't fill up my plate all the way. This food tastes really good. I really like what they did with these cream peas. I'm feeling full. I don't have to empty my plate. I can just let it go. I'll admit that I'm usually the first person to scarf down my food and head up for seconds. I've already explained that in thorough detail earlier. <laughs> but I always regret the bloat that comes along with those seconds. So it's okay to take a few minutes between plates and even between bites so that we can help our bodies understand that we feel full along the way. We can select what plate that we grab. We can select what we put on it. We can select what drinks that we consume. All of this to help us avoid the feeling of eating too much and the feeling that we have to work it all off later. At this point, you've considered options for setting yourself up for success both before and during your holiday party, but we're not done yet. It's time to talk about what you can do afterwards. Believe it or not, you can do things that center around something other than food. Maybe you could consider going for a walk. Last Christmas, it was in the 60s, the mid 60s on Christmas for crying out loud. I personally went on several walks throughout the day Walking can help speed up the time it takes your stomach to process food into your small intestines. And that helps promote the feeling of feeling full. And if you believe in the farmer's almanac, Christmas this year is expected to be snowy and then mild the week of Christmas. That mild weather could be the perfect trigger to get you up from the table or the couch and outside and into the nice weather. You could also find other activities like playing a card game or a board game or assembling a puzzle, or if you're feeling really adventurous, you can talk about this year's election results. And I'm sure that'll get things going. It's clear that there are a number of steps that we can take before, during, and after our holiday meal to help us reduce the feeling that I felt when I was as stuffed as I was all those Christmases ago. Before we eat, we can eat regular meals and drink lots of water. We can set a food budget for ourselves so that we don't overindulge. And while the food is being prepared, we can position ourselves away from the food. And when it's ready, we can grab a smaller plate, not the larger plate. And when the meal is over, we can take time between nabbing seconds by being active or having a discussion with the people that we care about. That's the real reason why we typically get together. Most importantly though, I wanna leave you with the fact that we should remember that we are the ones that are in control of our eating, not anybody else. And even if you feel like you overdo it during your next COVID friendly holiday meal, you can always hop back on the bus the next day. Thank you everyone.